Welcome back. So we've just learned about the first two, well, kind of three, because we also mentioned that there is such a thing as a complex number in Python. But we talked about the main ones, the int and float, and there are still a few data types remaining. But before we get to these, we are missing an important concept. And this is going to be our first important term in Python. And as a matter of fact, in all programming languages. It's called variables. Yep, that's a term. Now, if this is your first time learning a programming language, you might not know what this means. If this isn't your first time, well, this is very simple because all languages have variables. But what are they exactly? Well, variables store information that can be used in our programs. So we can hold perhaps user inputs like values. Maybe when you log into Facebook, you need to hold some information such as your profile picture or maybe your date of birth in a variable. Variables are ways for us to store information on our computer. So let's have a look at this. If we remove this, and let's say I'm creating a quiz program. And this quiz program maybe measures your IQ. And let's say you just took the quiz and you found out that your IQ is 190. Quite high, good job. But we need to store that information somewhere. Well, we can do that with variables. So that in Python, all we need to do is name it whatever we want. In our case, it will be IQ. And we're going to say IQ equals 190. And this IQ here is a variable. It is something that I just completely made up. I could name it whatever I want. That's a variable too. The idea is that once we assign to a variable, that is, we're saying 190 is going to be assigned to IQ, I can now use it in my program whenever I want. For example, I can later on print, oh, make sure it's not cap, let's do print IQ. And if I do that and click run, you see that I can use IQ. So we can pretend here that a user takes a quiz, finds out their IQ is 190. We can store that information in this variable. And later on, when they come perhaps online or try to use the program again, they don't have to take the quiz all over because, well, we store that information in IQ. And remember what I said at the beginning, programs are simply data that's being stored, that's being changed, that's being removed, and that's all programs are. And variables are important concepts in Python and all languages. Now, variables can also sometimes be called names. So this could be a name, for example. And assigning a value is also known as binding. That is, we're binding the value 190 to this variable. So that when we request this variable, later on in our program, our computer knows how to look for this information. It's going to say, hey, I know what IQ is. I stored it somewhere in memory. And it's going to go look for that. And because it's being bound to a value, it points to this value 190. And remember, this number in memory gets stored as a binary representation in zeros and ones, right? But it doesn't matter to us because however our machine stores it, we don't care. We just want to be able to retrieve it. And then when we print it to do, well, get 190. Now, we're going to be using variables all over the course. But on top of just naming variables however we want, there is some best practices around variables of how you should write good variables. And as a matter of fact, these are specific rules that the Python community as a whole has that you'll just have to remember. So let's have a look at this. Variables, and remember, this is the symbol for best practices, are what we call snake case. Snake case means it's all lowercase and then spaces, well, they don't exist. We use underscores. Variables must start with a lowercase or an underscore. Variables can be anything with letters, numbers, and underscores. But remember, they have to start with lowercase and underscore. 
That means we can start a variable with a number. They're also case sensitive. That means if I create a variable, but let's say this snake case, this variable has a capital E instead of a lowercase e, that'll be a different variable. And then finally, you can't overwrite keywords. Let's go through these with some examples. First, a variable has to be in the form of a snake case. That is, if I want to call this user IQ, I should technically have an underscore here instead of a space just to make sure that a programmer, maybe I'm working on a team, can read this variable. So that's snake case. You also have to start your variables with either a letter or an underscore. So I can technically do this. And I click run. Well, that's going to give me an error because I've changed the variable. So now in order to access that variable, you have to go like this. Now, underscore in Python signifies a private variable, something that we'll go over later on in the course. But usually you're starting your variables with a letter. And afterwards, yeah, you can add numbers if you want in here. That's no problem. This is still going to work. This is a valid variable. Finally, a variable is case sensitive. So if I do user IQ here, and I do capital letters, I can't access this like this because, well, it doesn't exist. Again, it's case sensitive. We have to make sure that we match. And finally, we don't want to overwrite keywords. What does that mean? Keywords in Python, well, they already mean something in Python. For example, this print is a keyword. You can see it highlighted in blue. So that if I create a variable saying print equals 190, and then I do print print, hmm, let's see what happens. We get an error because I can't really assign to this variable because print already means something. Now I know what you're wondering. What are these keywords in Python? That's a simple Google search away. And we'll learn these throughout our course. If we go to Python keywords by WE3Schools, you'll see that we have these keywords that each mean something in Python. Again, we'll go through these and we'll learn them throughout our course. And if you look, it's not that intimidating. There's not that many. So as we practice, you'll start to get familiar with them. But the easiest way to tell whether it's keyword or an important word in, in Python, well, you see that it's highlighted in blue. As soon as you create a variable that is unique, it's highlighted in white. And this will be the case with whatever environment that you're typing code into, as long as it's set up for Python. Now, beyond the Python keywords, there are different things like, for example, the INT for integer that we've learned. So these we're going to get familiar with. So a good rule of thumb for variables is to make them really descriptive, really say what your intention is. And a good programmer is somebody that's able to name things really well with their variables. So if a new developer comes and looks at your code, it's easily understood. Finally, variables can also be reassigned. For example, let's say we have IQ here of 190. And then I decide to perhaps have another variable, call it user age. And for some reason, I want to assign user age to perhaps have IQ divided by four. Is that going to work? It should, right? I'm saying user age is going to equal 47.5. I'm using IQ, which is 190, dividing it by four, and then assigning it to user age. I can maybe assign this to another variable called user age or called A. And once again, I run this and it's printing the same thing. So you can use variables to store that information and use it whenever you want. You can use it in operations, you can use it to reassign it whatever your program needs. 
Now, later on in the course, we're going to learn about classes. And classes actually have a different convention than this. But we'll get to that later on. For now, though, I want to mention two small gotchas with variables that you should be careful with. For example, there's an idea of constants. And constants are those things that never change in a program. For example, if we wanted to create a constant, such as the value of pi, let's say for now it's 3.14, we can have it all in capitals. And that's going to tell other programmers that, hey, this is a constant. This number is not meant to change. I mean, we could change it if we want. There you go. I just made pi equal to 0. So it was stored as 3.14 in memory, but then we overwrote it and reassigned it the value of 0. You can still do that, but a good convention is that if you see this, that means this number or this value should never be changed. Another type of variable that you're going to see, and this is something we'll see later on in the course, are the, it doesn't look like I just did double underscores here, but it's two underscores, and we call these dunder. And as you can see here, we have some dunder variables that Python has. Now, we'll learn more about these later on, but the idea here is that these are meant to be left alone. You should not touch them. You shouldn't create a variable with two underscores like this and call it hi hi and assign it a value. I mean, you still can. However, this is generally not good practice. So you want to be careful with that. But the one thing that I really want you to take away from this is that variables are really important concepts in programming. Naming variables is one of the most important skills you have as a programmer. I know it sounds silly, but there's so many times that I read code that is so hard to understand simply because a programmer is not descriptive enough. So throughout the course, we're going to learn how to name things well so that our code reads like English. And that's the whole point of writing good code. The point of writing good code is that it's readable and understandable by other programmers. By the way, to finish off, I just want to show you one quick trick. There's also a way that you might see in some code bases that uses something like this. Equals one, two, three. And this simply is a way for us to rapidly assign values to variables multiple times. So for example, if I do print A, then print B, then print C, and I run this, you see that I get 1, 2, 3. We assign value of 1 to A, value of 2 to B, and value of 3 to C. Just a quick shorthand way that you might encounter. All right, let's take a break, and I'll see you in the next one.